Welcome to another episode of Game Day Grind. I'm Aditi Kinkawala here with a man who needs no introduction, Joe Thomas. And today, we are going to take you behind the scenes, behind those doors, to check out what the equipment staff does. I can't wait. It's my wheelhouse. We're going to see all the work that they do to get ready for the big game. First Energy Stadium for Thursday Night Football, Browns versus the Steelers. And I'm in the equipment room right now with Browns equipment legend, Jimmy Mack, 20 years on the equipment staff for the Browns. And he's going to show me how they get the shoulder pads ready for game day. Let's go. What's the first step that we got to do here with these shoulder pads? So we've got this ready to go. Took a few extra steps. Now we get his jersey ready. Right for you go inside out. Okay. Start backwards. Work our way back through. And the reason you go inside out is... We're getting this stuck to the tape. This is the side that's getting stuck okay. to the tape. We want to work with this. Just a whole lot easier to get the job done. Getting into a good spot. Not always going to be perfect from the get-go. We'll straighten it out at the end. But we're just getting to here, and then we're just going to work our way backwards with our hands through, getting the jersey over All one right, shoulder, perfect. one, then getting it over the other shoulder, pulling yep. it through. It's, if this doesn't go pain. on well and Joel doesn't play well tonight, you can blame me in the equipment room. So I let's tried work on, on this one, one here. so okay. that you can get one over. Yep. Now you know you're there. Okay. Now let's get the other shoulder. All right. Now you're working through and flipping that. Exactly. There's the hard part. So I think one of Once the things there, yeah, yeah. people are most interested when they see an NFL jersey yeah. is how small and tight they are, right? Because typically the jerseys <laughs> yes. that we wear when we're going out, oh in front of the fans or you're going to an event, yeah. it's a totally different cut jersey. Completely different. It's more yeah. like a t-shirt oh, than yeah. an a actual jersey, shirt. which is like yeah. skin tight. <laughs> exactly. Now, from here, so we, we got know the jersey you're at the on. basic point. From here, so this on. is where we're going to... Looks good straight. to me, right? We can just hey, leave we, it like uh, this, right, Jimmy? We got to get it to the end. This is not the way to finish this off. No, 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 no. So, a little extra tug, a little, a little more pull. We're pulling this down. We're using the V of the jersey, actually, to bring it down to the V okay. of the shoulder pad. So that's an important landmark to make sure that it's the V of that jersey point. is going to hit right there. Right here. So it's not up in your neck. That's right. We're getting that straight. We're turning around looking at the back. That tape really sticks. <laughs> you really got to tug at it because okay. we want the name plate as straight as possible across the back as well. That keeps everything straight so when you're getting this on, getting this over somebody like this and bringing it down over you, the least amount of work we have to do to actually get it mm -hmm. straightened back on you. Everything on there looks fantastic. Then we just get them ready for later when we get them dressed. We start with this little rollover. Um, That's vital. Tuck this through. Because if you don't have these latches and these straps available right here in oh. this point, the player's not gonna be able to get his arm through there, right? We talked yeah. about getting these pads on yes. the players all at the same time, right before you go out for warm-ups, It's yes. tough and you want to have everything kind of tight right here so you can stick that one arm through and then you can have the manager kind of help get that get other, the other arm, arm through. through right? Get it pulled down tight, then buckle you up, yep. Boom. everything. It's, it's a profit. With Joel, do you have the number of latches memorized? Oh, <laughs> how he likes the tightness it of is. this strap. It is. It's always the fifth hole in the buckle. Fifth hole. There you go. <laughs> always, I knew you'd know it. Sides. I knew you'd know it because you've done it so many one. times. With They've those always, guys. guys, you guys were always particular. You knew um, exactly where you needed the feel. Other guys are very particular. They'll come in. Some of them will have seven on one side, eight on the other. Not sure if it's just they feel tighter. A little, they like it to be a little wonky, something. They all have particular needs, particular feel. They know right when they get it on. Mm -hmm. This is where I need this. I'm ready to go. It's amazing how the wheels turn. It's funny. Every <laughs> little detail of the jersey is oh, so important and really so is. specific to each person. You're saying yeah. the number of straps for Joel. For me, it was always four on one side and three on the other because yes. as a left tackle, the guys that I was usually blocking were a little bit offset. So I wanted my pads to fit just, just a, little, a little half inch to that side yeah. because that's where I was mainly going to be facing up against yeah. my opponent. Um, and some guys, I have no idea how they get in the jerseys that they wear. They're three sizes too small. I don't know how they breathe, but whatever way you guys want it, that's how we did it. And that's Always. the way you guys did it for Always. 11 years for me. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, it was amazing.
should have known that this was Miles' locker, right? Who else is going to have a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops in their locker? You know, if you mix them up. He might know. I don't know. He doesn't really speak to it, but uh, he has dinosaurs back at the, at the facility as well. All right. Which one's Miles and which one's the poor Steelers offensive lineman? That's what I want to know. Oh, then you have to go with something like this. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Right nice. There. Yes. <laughs> Climbing All right. the mountain. Yeah. Only See, Miles isn't would that know. More inspiring than just yeah. having these guys hanging out like exactly. that. Exactly. Only Miles would know that if these two faced off in the wild, who would win, right? <laughs> right. Miles would be like, no, the, stepping the on Stegosaurus his would obviously win because of that spiky tail and the lack of lateral mobility by the Triceratops would never be able to spin around well enough. How impressed are you that Joe Thomas knows his dinosaurs? I'm very impressed. <laughs> I got a six year old son. Believe me, we've been playing with dinosaurs for a while now. All right, Corey Gillisey does not trust you to tell me how to <laughs> hang up Miles' Sorry, gear. Sorry, Joe. So, well, you said that you never actually It's set true. Up I, I never actually set up my own locker, so I really don't know what's going on here. Okay, so you can guess. So let's start with oh. the shoes. Oh, they're dirty. I thought most people put, like, brand new cleats. So after we set up all the lockers, we'll go through every player's locker and we'll clean every cleat off on game day morning. So we come down to the stadium before any player arrives and we'll go through every locker. We spray them down, we wash them down, make sure they look good for the, uh, the game. Okay, so where do the shoes go? Uh, the shoes will go right here on the bottom. So we normally pull the chair out. Okay. Toes facing back, just like that. Do they go all the way back? Nope, the bag will actually go all the way back. So they just go right up front like that. Oh, there you go. Right. That now was a critical moment in. there, Aditi. Oh, yeah, you moved the laces, right? Because you don't want the laces hanging out. That's yeah. just a sloppy look. Everything's about clean and precision here when you're setting and up these orderly. lockers. Yeah. Exactly. Agreed. All right, next. What is this thing? So that is his helmet bag. We right. put each helmet when we're loading the bags up uh, in a bag just to protect them as they travel on the truck. That way they don't get scuffed up or marked after Jimmy Max hard work. Because, what, Friday? Yeah. After you have your last practice where you're going to be hitting helmets they go through and they buff all these helmets to make sure there's no marks there's no scratches yes everything looks clean and freshly painted for game day is this washed I like i feel like they should be washed. that's a <laughs> that's a specialty headband that has to go to every game that so is the one thing miles needs to play yes so miles needs to play this because Joe so this will go we happen. always display it right in front of his locker so he display knows it's it? yeah okay but do you wash it uh, and you have to be very, it's more of a hand wash thing than throwing it in the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to go that's wash That's a fragile that piece. This was a bar of soap in the sink. I have another question for you. I remember when Nick Chubb was not in a game and it was because he lost a contact lens. Mm. Yeah. How many contact lenses do you keep on the sideline? I don't know how exactly how many they keep, but I know similar to mouthpieces, anybody that is in contacts, the trainers all have their prescription in their trunks Similar to like us with gloves. Right on the sideline? Yes. Like you don't have to run back in here? Nope, to get it's it? right in the sideline. They have a sideline trunk for mouthpieces, contacts. We have a similar trunk that we have player gloves in. So anybody that has an SMU, a special makeup that is unique to that player on the sideline will have their gloves right there on the sideline. Something rips. We don't have to run all the way back in here. It's right on the sideline, easy for us to grab. So we know that Joe liked trunky pants. What else was special about uh, him? Joe, his last couple of years, do you remember your gloves? They were discontinued. There was a lot of drama about my gloves. Yes, his gloves were <laughs> discontinued. They just stopped making them, right? Just like most gloves. Yeah, and your they, cleats. And my cleats. They just come out with a new model. But I was just such a grump, such an old, like, fuddy-duddy, stubborn that I wanted to wear those pair. And I tried to wear their new pair, but they just fit a little bit differently. They weren't cut the same. They didn't fit my hand. Like, you know, a good latex glove, nice and tight. But they also had some padding on the back of the fingers, yep. which helped prevent your fingers from getting too jacked up. And I just loved that pair. And the hard thing was I wore the same set of cleats almost my whole career until yeah. they would just wear out. Exactly. But with gloves, I would wear a new pair every week because they got so beat up and the tackiness and would go away really quick. Fingers. And because I would tape it. So a lot Wait, of times so you don't just call Under Armour and say, so hi, future Hall of Famer and so legend did. Joe Thomas once. But a lot of, the, a lot of times the, these companies, they want you in the newest stuff because that's what they're selling at retail. So they want to see Joe Thomas in their newest gloves. So Joe came to us and was like, we need to find more of these gloves. Every week, I'd go into your locker because he would keep them in his drawer. I'd cut the tape off treat the grass stains, wash them, <laughs> and put them back in his locker so he could wear them to make it So through. I want to say it was maybe year like six or seven when this happened. When they discontinued it, I called up Under Armour, or maybe Corey did, and said, send me every pair of these that you have. Because when you're playing a team that's in a white jersey, you'd wear white gloves so that your 
hand wouldn't stick out too much, right? For the holding <laughs> possibilities, which of course never happened with me, but Not with you. just in case. Or if they were in a dark jersey, you wanted to wear a dark glove. So you were wearing a different pair almost every week. Yeah. And then you had gloves during practice, of course. So they sent me like three cases. But after like three or four years, we were running out. Yeah. And so instead of like throwing them away like we used to, like these poor guys had to like try to revive them after every it's Joe game. Joe Thomas, how could you not do it? <laughs> helmet will go right in the middle cubby here. Okay, it does look very shiny. It does not look like a game-worn helmet. Jimmy did a good job. Yeah, yeah we there's always like barely the one little scuff the, right the same there. direction that's on our shirt. So the face Ooh. mask is always going this direction. Yep. It's like the American flag, right? It's always got to be flying in a yes. certain direction. Yeah, put a nick in. Yep, Jimmy Max got to do that all over oh, again. Yeah, sorry. It's going to take <laughs> another right. 12 hours. So when we put the helmets in, one thing we always make sure, which is already is, is we have them all buckled up. That way it looks professional. I know some of the players will come in, they got to unbuckle it, but just for aesthetics, when a player walks in, everything is in the right spot. Everything is presentable. It's just now you're making it, me a little, it's the little that detail. Right in the middle? Okay. Hey, yeah, it's just like on the field. It's all about the little details. This is professional all the way around. Gloves will go in the top right cubby here. In the bag or out Yeah, of they bag? can stay in the bag. Joe, so would you like to put the shoulder pads up? Yeah. So here's a question. Do you like the like the little low back flap out? Normally you, you tuck it that way, it, it stands a little in. bit better. He's only got two pairs, of, one's pair of socks? So That's actually one pair. It's actually one pair, it's two pieces. Yeah. So what you do, he'll wear this initial piece, a mid sock here, and then this hem sock goes right above it. You do get some guys that'll come back and ask for like, at halftime, it is weird if, if a jersey rips or a shirt like uh, like Josh Dobbs. Yeah, when his shirt got pulled, yes. we approached him at halftime, asked if he wanted to switch. He just had us cut it. Just cut it for now. I don't want to take anything up. But there are guys when that happens or a jersey rips that'll come in and, and we know it. We have emergency backup jerseys for every player, just like gloves. And we'll have it set up in the equipment room, ready to go. So that way, if they come at halftime, we're popping the shoulder pads off, switching it, just as you guys did earlier. And they're ready to roll. We put it back on them. If you walked up, you'd think this is a nice looking locker. I think it looks great. Other than the, uh, the dinosaurs that are having World War III there, I think everything looks exactly as it should. That fits the moment. Exactly. Thursday That's night, right. rivalry game. So this is Vince Herzog, who we talked about in one of our preseason broadcasts because he prepares all the footballs. Can you take us through that? How many balls did you have to get ready for today? So 12 game day balls and 12 backups. So. Oh, okay. And when did you do this? Um, earlier on the week, um, Monday, usually the day after the game, I get after preparing the balls for the next game. And when you get these balls from Wilson, they look a lot different than this, right? No doubt. It's kind of a light pink color almost. So it takes a lot of work to go from a crisp new ball that's slippery that nobody could catch exactly. to what I'm looking at right now, which is a really nice tacky broken in ball. How many hours do you think you're putting in to take the ball from brand new to what you would put out there on the field for the players? Each ball, I would say half an hour to 45 minutes. Okay, so that process is putting some Mississippi mud on it. Yep. And then rubbing it with what? A lot of brushing involved. Wilson has their own ball brush that we use. So what are your limitations? Like what are the things you can do to the ball to get it prepared and what are the things you're not allowed to do? It's kind of wide open for the game balls. Um, as long as it looks like a ball and the ref feels like a ball, they're not going to have any issues with it. Wilson kind of did a partnership with Hall Tech and they made it kind of seamless to inflate a ball. So we've got it set to 13 pounds of pressure right here. Uh, the ball has to be between 12 and a half and 13 and a half. And I, I mean, I can throw why one on you, there yeah, why you if you guys want. Just right in the middle, the sweet spot, you know. Like 13.5 or 13.4? I don't know if, I mean, I'm sure he could tell a difference, but. Um, can you tell a difference between a 12.5? I can't personally. Joe, can you? I don't touch football, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so we're right at 13. Okay, so then the refs will test? Yes, they'll, they'll check them again, I believe, with the same machine. If you go through all 12, usually it's a bad weather game, or um, players will keep balls for touchdowns or... Uh, turnovers, you'll lose some. These balls are a little bit different than the K balls. Correct. And that's to the specification of the long snapper or the kicker or who has final say on the K balls? Charlie's the vet in the room, so he does kind of have the final say. So I prep three balls. Really, I'm just smoothing the ball out because as you can see with the quarterback ball, it's 
very grippy. Right. The K balls, they like them smooth. Okay. I think it makes them more aerodynamic. And do you compress the? Yes, uh, they how? like a more round. And how do you do that? Just. Wait a minute. You see you these guns? Push? You don't get guns like this by letting a machine push you, in on the can ball. Can you really push that ball at all? <laughs> you can push a little bit, you know, just bit, take yeah. a little bit of that sharpness out of the corner there. You can see the color. If you feel it, you can tell the smoothness. So it started as the same ball, though? Yes. Like, so they, okay, so a K ball is just prepared differently. It is actually the same football. Yes. And so now, how brown will this get? It won't get um, that brown, right? Not that brown, no. Um, over time. It's so much smoother. You can just see how much shinier that is, right. and you can tell how much smoother it is yeah. versus this ball, which is not built for speed. It's built for tackiness. That's right. So rubbing it with the brush is what brought out all the pebbles. Correct. You would yep. usually think that like brushing would take away pebbles, yeah. right? Would take away grain. Okay, so you're going to try to smush it a little bit yeah. and then do what else to it? Take away the pebble using the back of the brush, smoothing it out. Okay. Um, brush it uh, using the opposite end of the brush, like the smooth flat part of the back of the brush, kind of buffing it out okay. to bring out like some tackiness that okay. Charlie likes. So. Is uh, there a preference as far as like how pumped up it is for a kicker? I think some like it more pumped up, but I haven't heard much preference. It's in the same range. It has to be 12 and a half to 13 and a half. Um, and so you just do 13. Yeah, the refs actually completely control the K-ball, so. Thank you very much, we appreciate That's it. Nice. No problem. It's amazing, even me being in the locker room for 11 seasons, I learned a little bit because that stuff was always happening before we even got to the stadium. Those guys worked so hard. Okay, so you think that Joel Batonio will notice that his pads were done by somebody different? I think he's probably going to have some words with me after the game about the job I did with his jersey. <laughs> Are you telling him? Did you tell him that? Uh, you I didn't tell him out? yet. It's after the win. Well, I'll tell him. Oh, okay. What about the dinosaurs? You think they'll move the dinosaurs back? Yeah, I they think they're going to make the... sure that Miles Locker gets changed back the way it should be after we uh, made a little bit of a mess in there. But I feel like it was inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see what happens tonight. <laughs> All right, thanks for humoring me. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Game Day Grind.